Jean-Michel Jarre once said these wise words, and I quote, Music is a reflection of the images one has in one's mind. A drug of the spirit, a way of life between necessity and pleasure. Like the air, the sea, the light. Making music for me has always been like building a resonant landscape somewhere between technology and ecology. Unquote. Perfectly stated there by the synthesizer maestro himself. He has just released his 22nd studio album, Oxymore, and let's talk all about that. Hello to you, my friend, and welcome to Piano and Keyboard Artist here on the Vaughan George channel. And when it comes to keyboarded artists, synthesizers, who better to talk about than Jean-Michel Jarre, one of the pioneers and the gurus of the genre. So it's here, Oxymore, the 22nd studio album. The anticipation is over, it's here. And I've done two videos on that and you can see those videos by clicking up here or in the link in the description below. And the first video I did was about the collaboration he did with Martin Gore and then he collaborated with a newcomer's Death Pact and I was very very impressed with what I'd heard and of course listening to the full album now it hasn't disappointed so I'm going to talk through the album my feelings and at the end I will give it a rating so let's jump in. Oxymore is essentially a concept album. Jean-Michel Jarre has released a two-minute video regarding the album sort of like a promotional clip and he talks about the concept behind this and the emphasis on this album, as I've spoken about in my two previous videos, really is more about sound, binaural sound, placement, acoustic space, and things like that. This album was influenced by a pioneer called Pierre Henry. Now, full disclosure, I'm a bit of an ignoramus, I admit, but I had never heard of this gentleman and up until the point, and so, you know, I've obviously done some research on it now, not as much as I'd like to. Indeed, it warrants its own video. Pierre Henry did release an album called Futurist way back in 1975, which is like 47 years ago. Um, link to that video in the description below. Really, really ahead of its time, and you must remember that this was before the sort of advent and the the days of sampling he indeed was a pioneer and interesting when it comes to fashion and art and things like that we often find that you know fashion moves in a circle fashion and art so it is not unusual to hear things now that you'll you'll think it's groundbreaking but then when you actually do some research you will find it was done many years ago and you know that is evident in fashion art and music indeed pierre henry was a composer and a pioneer of a genre which became known as musique concrète and that is a type of music composition that utilizes recorded sounds as raw material. Sounds are often modified through the application of audio signal processing and tape music techniques. And you can go on to read up about that now. I'm not familiar with this artist. I've only learned about it. I am blown away by how advanced and how ahead he was of its time remember this was before the sort of mainstream sampling sampling really sort of came into itself um really sort of kicked off in the 80s you know and we you know we talk about the passion mode a lot in this channel i think of our friend gareth jones who was a pioneer of sampling talking about gareth jones as well he was obsessed with acoustic spaces and that was a very big part of his work with depeche mode which was recording acoustic spaces this is indeed where Jean-Michel Jarre's focus was for this album. I've said in the previous two videos that with the collaboration he did, you know, with Brutalism, you know, with uh, Martin Gore and Death Pact, in the singles that we've heard preceding this album, you can hear that the emphasis really is on production and binaural sound and just the placement of sound and acoustic spaces. So I guess if you wanted to be really cynical, you could say that there's nothing new about this. This is, you know, this this was this has been done before. I guess you could say that about any art form, really. Realistically speaking, I guess you could say, you know, there's no more pioneering. Everything's being done. The way to get around that is to put a new spin on it. And I think Jean-Michel Jarre has done that. So coming back to his promotional video once again, he talks about that right from the onset of the production, he had speakers put all around him, you know, sort of like, all around the room and also above him and the emphasis here 
unlike with a traditional album or the traditional approach where you start you know you start composing arranging and then afterwards you do the mixing and panning from the onset here it was all about placing things so really from the word go he was placing sounds in you know in 3d space pl placement so and you can really hear that that's really what this album's about it's not about melody it's not really about traditional composition it's one of the reasons why sort of traditional Jean-Michel Jarre Jean fans are a little bit disappointed with this indeed people I've spoken to have thought that you know th there's nothing to latch onto. it's all just sound um, I've had people say it's you know it's like watching a, it's like video game music and stuff like that so this is really a album for I would say purists and producers I mean I, I like it I really enjoyed it I'll be honest with you I've had to listen to it quite a few times to really get into it because you know I'm a melody guy um, so when something doesn't have melody it can feel it, it's quite difficult for me to kind of emotionally connect with it however listening to it several times I have really gotten to like this it really 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 is good I mean it is a masterclass of you know technology and stuff I've said this before that Jean-Michel Jarre has got nothing to prove he's done his time he was indeed a pioneer so as an artist he's now looking to push the frontiers I've also said that the rules in electronic music have always been the same well it's kind of an unwritten rule and that is kind of when you're an electronic artist your job or your role or your desire is to create sounds that no one's ever heard before and present it in a way that no one's ever heard before electronic music in its origins was very quite rebellious a little bit like punk in a way although not as a not as sort of like punk but more sort of like rebelling against the sort of norms of composition and stuff and just doing things in a different way electronic music's been around for a long time so it has become a lot harder to actually come up with sounds that people haven't heard before hence the reason Jean-Michel Jarre has been at it for years classically trained this record is not going to fulfill your your sort of like your musical needs and what I mean by that is it's not like the classical Jean-Michel Jarre melodies we've you know we've come to know I'm thinking of uh, you know the Oxygen album which was groundbreaking and the Rendezvous album which synthesizer gurus kind of criticize as Jean-Michel Jarre kind of selling out a bit but the Rendezvous album was very very important this was the album where he broke America and it really was the album which got a lot of kids at the time adults buying keyboards Jean-Michel Jarre really put the commercial spin and the showed people look this is what keyboards are all about you know with the light shows and everything coming back to Oxymor on the promotional video Jean-Michel Jarre talks about how he wants to present this live in a way where you're sitting in the dark with no lights and it's just sound now I thought that's brilliant mate <laughs> brilliant that's really really economical you go out live and there's you know that's going to save you a fortune on the light show and you know that's really doing a, a 180 because Jean-Michel Jarre is well known for the light shows and as far as the light shows are known some people have sometimes said that the light shows are a bit of a gimmick you know the lights and I've always been a, a fierce defender of Jean-Michel Jarre not that he needs my defending I think the lights that go with his performance where some people dismiss it as a gimmick I just think no they're being cynical I think it's very impressive and that is what he's that is what he's known for so when he talks about doing this album live and not having any lights that is very as I say economical because he doesn't have to have all the lights but it's also very clever because once I heard him say that I did indeed sit in a dark room and listen to this album and it is really an attack on the senses some people find it too jading too overwhelming with all these sounds and stuff the emphasis once again is on production Jean-Michel Jarre has always been a pioneer he's done everything this is his 22nd album he's got nothing to prove so he's really pushing the frontiers of technology and indeed in his previous album as well which I think it was Amazonia it, you know it was all about you know he, he is really into his acoustic spaces and stuff so he is where he is at the moment and this album is not going to be everyone's cup of tea as brilliant as this album is it's a far cry away from the sort of typical melodic Jean-Michel Jarre stuff the stuff that we sort of grown to love him for um, just a few examples this is uh, one of my favorites chronology part four
Not forgetting Rendezvous Part 4, whether you like it or loathe it, it is arguably one of his most successful commercial releases to date. Classic sort of genre, melodic stuff. You're not going to find that on this Oxymo album. But once again, the emphasis on this album is not that at all. Now, coming back to Pierre Henry and his Futurist album, check that out and just listen to how it's all made up of, you know, like sort of found sounds. And um, I don't know what the techniques involved were at the time, but of course, this was sort of before sort of traditional sampling. You know, with sampling, as you know, um, you know, you would te typically have like this keyboard I've got here, which is an old, old school Emacs, typically used by Depeche Mode for live performances. But you would record a sound into this keyboard and it, it would be what you call mapped and you could actually play it up and down the keyboard. Now, I believe with this album Futurist, I don't believe that is what was done because that technology was not available at the time. Um, so it would be interesting to see how, he, how it was done. It would have been recorded onto tape and spliced. I think it would have been very, very innovative. And indeed, I think I should do some more research on that, you know, before I talk about it. Uh, it's just sort of off the top of my head, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, you know, the Wendy Carlos album, which had uh, switched on Bach, you know, it was, it was, it was so ahead of its time. And when you listen to that album, um, we're going a bit off topic, but just listening to that album, just the way it sounds. And the, when, if we look at what was available technologically at the time, it makes that album even greater. Back to Oxymore. I like this album. It takes a while to listen to it. You need to listen to it a few times. I think for traditional genre lovers, you know, all his kind of classical background and and musical sensibilities, they're, they are there in some way, but not in the traditional. It's not a very, very melodic album. This is not an album that I can sort of sit and play on my piano. It does what it's meant to do. It's all about pushing the frontiers of sound. And, you know, if you can just close your eyes and listen to this in the dark, it is very, very powerful. My two favorite tracks are Brutalism and Epica. Those are the last two songs on this album. And boy, does that kick ass. Uh, unlike sort of traditional, when I say traditional, I mean Jean-Michel Jean has done loads of records. But when I say traditional, I'm talking about the sort of melodic ones that I just played you now. Jean-Michel Jean as I said, why he was so successful was he was not only a pioneer of synthesizers, but he also had this, this classical background to fall back on. So it wasn't just electronic sound, it was both. And this is why he was so brilliant. This album, of course, is more about production. But what it lacks in melody, you do get it fulfills your needs in other ways, you know. Uh, it just is really an attack of the senses in a good way. His use of rhythm in this album is something that is probably, I could say, one of the most important things. Whereas sort of classic genre albums were very melodic, this is really rhythmic, focusing on sort of like real machine rhythms and it has its place on the dance floor. I'm thinking of the old days, you'd have the pop songs, and then you'd have the dance versions. Well, that doesn't really happen these days because if you listen to commercial radio, which I don't, but it's it's all fundamentally dance music. You know, the, the rhythm and the boom, boom is, is so prominent. Rhythm is very, very powerful in this album uh, in an intelligent way. Uh, lots of drones and sweeps and it's just, it's a blast. You've got to listen to it. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm going to give it a rating now. So when it comes to rating albums, it's quite difficult because often I will rate an album and then Years later, I'll come back to it and I'll change my mind. <laughs> so the rating is always based on how I feel about it now. So first things first, when you're rating an album, it's it's a combination between you know the production, enjoyability, how it makes you feel, all kinds of things, your emotional connection to the album and everything. So with all these factors coming into play, can I just say, so far as production and innovation is concerned, it's 10 out of 10. It's an absolute masterclass. And if you're a producer, listen to this. This is how you use binaural mixing and it is an absolute masterclass. So it doesn't fail there. It's 10 out of 10 for that. Of course, for my melodic sort of musical needs, being a melody guy, it, I won't say disappoints, but it's, it's just not there. But once again, the emphasis on this album was not to do a melodic album. But then again, 
it makes up for it with the fact that it's very rhythmic and the fact that it is true to what it's trying to be. You know, this album was started off as a concept. He had a, a vision and a concept and he has fulfilled the brief. So with all these mitigating factors at play, I'm going to give this album 8 out of 10. It's well worth a listen. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I enjoyed it. It's up to you now, my friend. Let me know your thoughts. Tell me, what did you think of Oxymore? Did you like it? Are you still trying to listen to it? Are you disappointed? Anything you want to say about it. If you've not subscribed yet, please do hit that like button. It helps me a lot. And if it's your first time to this channel, I'm welcoming you with open arms. Thank you so much, my friend. And to those who've just joined, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Lots of love and adios. Thank you.